Welcome back to a walk in the park. We are still in Discovery Land at Disneyland Paris. We're passing Star Tours. The adventures continue, which you may remember opened in 2011 at Walt Disney World in Disneyland. Guess when it opened here? When? Last year. Oh. They just finally found the budget. Oh. Okay. Uh, so if you wonder why the Walt Disney Company was uh, itching to take over, uh, it's because things were not going so great here. And uh, hopefully now that the company has uh, full power to make all the financial decisions, things will be headed in the right direction. Uh, but it's good they have Star Tours. It's a pretty cool one. It's got a cool queue. I love the shop at the exit. It's really great. I think it's my favorite Star Tours. Yeah, I don't know. The Tokyo building's really fun, too. It's Is this that... multi-level thing. Yeah. It's between this one and Tokyo. Like, do they have the X-Wing in Tokyo? No, they do not. I love the X-Wing. No, but their building is cool and has an elevated exit walkway that goes over Tomorrowland. Oh! Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, Discovery Land Theater. Uh, you may notice these things, these zoetrope things. Uh, there is a reason they look that way. That top piece might look familiar. That's uh, the Imagination Institute logo because Honey, I Shrunk the Audience used to be here a while ago and yeah they're they're still here so this was just a branch of the imagination yeah. Institute. Though. and captain eo was here and, and what's going to be here next mickey's philhar magic in a couple months or philhar magic philhar magic excuse me you see pizza planet pizza planet's hiding back there that's not likely not reopening at any point yeah i'd bet some money on that they said it's uh special events you're so gonna use so that you for can special rent it events. out. No, I think they mean like their special event. Oh. I'm not sure I would want to rent out Pizza Planet. I'm not sure anybody would want to rent out Pizza yeah. Planet. Any Pizza Planet that's ever existed in any park, for that matter. And I guess the only thing that we didn't mention that was over top there is the train station. Oh yeah, I guess we missed that. Oh well. I love it. It's train. on top of Star Tours. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's pretty cool walking behind Space Mountain, too, since yeah, you can't do that. It's up. Yeah, it's the only Space Mountain that's, uh, you can walk around the whole thing. Well, at least without trespassing. <laughs> okay, there's the voice of experience. Yeah, well, I, I haven't done that. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Or without, like, uh, I guess, like, Going from the contemporary, walking around that way into Tomorrowland. That's true. And then maybe driving around the back side. You'd, it'd be complicated, but you could, you could do, it. do it. You could do it, yeah. Yeah. It could be done. I love the Discovery Land loop. It's nice, yeah. <laughs> I am afraid for its survival at this point. I don't. Yeah. I don't know that this uh, land will remain as is for uh, eternity. Oh, I hope so. It'd be nice, but I think they already ruined the theme by putting Buzz Lightyear yeah, in. Yeah, Buzz here, Lightyear does not. Which, fit. yeah, it doesn't make any sense. They kind of already conceded and made this Tomorrowland. There's the canon, of course, the original version uh, was all about from the Earth to the moon, and the canon would shoot you into space. Uh, and then, of course, they changed that with Mission 2. Uh, and now it's even worse with Hyperspace Mountain, which makes no sense. So it has a Star Wars theme, which uh, the Star Wars overlay of Disneyland Space Mountain works really great for a very good reason. Uh, Star Wars and Space Mountain share a birth year. Really? Uh, 1977. So they both have oh a somewhat similar aesthetic going on. So overlaying the Space Mountain at Disneyland isn't really all that weird. It kind of feels natural there. When you put it that way, it almost makes sense. Almost. Yeah. Here's the Nautilus, which uh, this is just for show. Uh, but there is a Nautilus walkthrough attraction. Uh, where you walk through the uh, Nautilus. Uh, it's actually in a show building that's hidden back there. So you go down the steps and back behind the berm there. Spoiler. Sorry. There's Space Mountain, which 
Uh, we should show them the Discovery Mountain thing. There is still a remnant of Discovery Mountain. What's Discovery Mountain? We, we talked about it on the last show, dear. Oh. <laughs> There's a diagram of the Nautilus for Yeah, so even after Discovery Mountain as a multi-attraction venue died, they were still going to keep that name. And so there, you can find some DMs here, not direct messages. I don't know if I can see it. I'll try to zoom a little bit. The lighting's not great right now. Uh, on this bridge, there are DMs which are... Discovery Mountain. We can get closer. Why don't we, why don't we get uh, in closer here and we'll take a better look. Uh, the Autopia. This is a pretty Autopia. cool Autopia. Yeah, and it fits the theme. It's got that uh, the Jules Verne, H.G. Wells thing going on. Steampunky. can kind of see it. Yeah, there we go. There's the DM. Discovery Mountain. It's there. Alright, we're going to keep going here. I think we're going to start heading towards Fantasyland. Let me see, it's hyperspace now. Uh, still really cool though. They've got some cool effects that are different from uh, the Disneyland one because this one has inversions. It's the only Space Mountain with inversions. Uh, so there's a part where you do, uh, I don't know the roller coaster term. It feels like a, I guess a barrel roll kind of move. And uh, as you do the barrel roll, there are screens in 360 degrees around the track. Uh, of like TIE fighters exploding in laser blasts and it's really really cool. Barrel roll. I said barrel roll. Is that what it is? I'm thinking back to some of all thrills. I don't know. I think I know. What I'm it's not one. a coaster but and it's also in the dark so it's hard to really tell if that's I don't what even it was. Know. How many inversions are there? I can't even tell. On it's that so one crazy. too. There's two, two in this one, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah so I think when they were designing rock and roller coaster they were like I, I think we found our crowd can handle two inversions. That's the max. Probably more than that, and it doesn't. It, it leaves the realm of Disney park attraction at that point. We're gonna cut this way. You were you were mad we didn't mention the train station. I was furious. Yeah. To give you a good idea of the problems Paris had over all these years, these were all lights, and at some point they decided. If it's one eh, light wanna, left. We don't want to keep repairing these. So they ripped all these out and filled them with cement that doesn't even like look like it belongs there. Yeah, um, there are still some little signs of that, but overall, I mean, from what people have said and what I've seen. Uh, it seems to have bounced back quite a bit since the, just before the 25th. It's a pretty great sign. And of course, there's smoking section because we're in Europe and a lot of people still smoke here. There's a lot more of them here. It kind of reminds me of like going to the Magic Kingdom in the 90s. I remember uh, I had quite a few people in our traveling party who used to smoke. And so I was quite familiar with where all the smoking sections were. And I think, uh, I think Magic Kingdom had eight at one point and now it's one. Just one, just uh, that path the behind, path behind, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But no, there's two, there's one in Frontierland, so. Where? Oh, the, the dock, there. yeah, there's two. The chair. Yeah, that one's really out of the way. It's and they're nice, both though. out of the way. But... Well, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, that is the point. Yeah. And now it's from us. Yeah. 
You know, here there are, you, you see a lot of people smoking uh, in places they're not supposed to here. So because of that, uh, the next time we see a trash can, I'm going to show you something. Uh, this is not like a real way. It's kind of a temporary path back here between Short Fantasy Island and Discovery Land. So this closes during uh, parades because uh, the parades come in and out of this area. Um, but otherwise, it's open. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot here. Kind of just a bypass. Yeah. This is a park of many bypasses. Yeah, but you'll see there's... Oh, gosh. Oh, it's... I think you're not going to see it far. I don't know if this gate's supposed to be open. Oh, no, there's another gate back there. There's also a gate on this side, too. So, lots of gates. Gates, gates, gates. Uh, so in Fantasyland here, we're going to travel to all different locales in Europe. Uh, we begin over here in Italy. Uh, one thing they do here is they have an abundance of restaurants and apparently not enough people to fill them. So a lot of restaurants are either seasonal or only operate on weekends. Uh, one of those would be this uh, Bella Notte. Was it Pizzeria Bella Notte? Pizzeria Bella yeah. And just like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The entry building is crooked for uh, Pizzeria Bella Notte. Sadly, we can't go inside. There's some cool stuff in there, references to Lady and the Tramp. And uh, also uh, Bacchus from Fantasia's in there too, which is interesting and weird and fun. Uh, here's It's a Small World, which I guess kind of blends between all the uh, locales. Not my favorite It's a Small World. Well, it doesn't really use the Mary Blair art style, yeah. so it, it just doesn't feel like it's a small world to me. I think it's a re-recording of the audio as well, which yeah. is a delightful recording, but it's a little yeah, different. Yeah, that's not my big problem. No, I love the recording, actually. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, it's not a fan. Uh, it's also basically just, it feels like a big warehouse because it's all one room. Uh, so the other small worlds are separated into rooms, like continents are each their own room, and in this one they're not. But this is really what the Disneyland version in terms of floating from outside. Yeah, I don't know. But it has the cover coverings for the boats. It does, because of the weather here. So they did the Disneyland outside load, but they covered it. It's interesting. The Mad Tea Party is being uh, worked on at the moment. Has not been open for a trip. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's a big piece of cracked paper. It happened. Yeah. I don't know what hit that, but it happened. Maybe the oh, the parade doesn't come this way. I'm thinking of other parks. <laughs> so all the parks are starting to blend in my head. There's a waffle stand. There's a waffle stand. Enchanté is open. What is that? Okay. Is that ice cream? Well, we don't know because it really hasn't been open since last weekend when we did it. Crepes? It's it gotta be like one crepes. or the other. It's crepe. Oh no, know. it's ice the Pirate and Princess ice cream. Oh. Do you need to get it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. She's gonna get some ice cream, so I'm gonna give you guys. We have like another minute or so left. In this episode, so let's take a quick trip. Let's let's visit one more uh, destination. How about the Carousel de Lancelot? Uh, a lot of attractions have these 25th photo op uh, things at them. Just something they did for the 25th anniversary, which, as we said on an earlier episode, still going on. And uh, you know, we should probably. I'm going to take in this one store because this store is cool. So we have Sir Mickey's here. So there's like the beanstalk. Sadly inside there's not, I couldn't believe it, there's not as much going on in there as there is in the Florida Sir Mickey's, but there's this carousel store. It's shaped like a carousel. There's a carousel horse up there. There's a stained glass window with a carousel. And we're gonna leave you this time with the really cool interior. 